are putting fire in their belly. When that poor man takes this riba money and consumes it, he has riba in his belly. If I don't tell him that it is riba money, then there's an even bigger thing on my part. So I can't give it in charity to others because haram for them. Can I give it to a Jew? <laughs> Can I give it to a Christian? To make weapon against us? Can I give it to a Buddhist? When Allah sent down the Quran, did He send it only to Muslims or did He send it to all of mankind? Ya ayyuhan nas, ya ayyuhan nas, inni Rasulullahi ilaykum jamia. O oh mankind, I am the messenger of Allah sent to all of you, all of mankind. So the prohibition of riba applies to all of mankind. Well, and if I can't give it to anybody else, what can I do with it? I cannot keep it myself. I cannot give it to others. And I don't have a chance to meet with the jinn. So <laughs> what do I do with it? I'll tell you what I would do with it. I will invite all my family members, particularly the young ones. Particularly the young ones. And I'll give them a lesson they will take with them all through their lives. I will first tell them very simply the story about riba. And then I'll tell them about this money. And I prefer to do it in the night time when it's dark. Hmm? Yeah. Then I say, all right, children, sit down. These are $10,000 here. See what Abba is going to do with this. I then get some matches, put some per kerosene, and I burn it. These children and these family members will have this etched in their hearts until the last day. They will never, never, never forget that day when Abba burnt the money before their very eyes. The only one who won't be able to sleep that night is the banker. The banker. I don't think that there's any prohibition against auctioning. Except that the Prophet said, he cursed, he cursed the one who is planted there to bid up the price. He is not himself interested in buying the article. He only wants to bid up the price. So he's planted there to bid up the price. The Prophet cursed him. Once you don't have that, I'm not aware of any prohibition against auctioning. What else? Bargaining. Bargaining. La ta'akulu amwalakum baynakum bil batil illa an takuna tijaratan do not consume each other's wealth unjustly. Rather, conduct business in such a way that there would be mutual satisfaction. So when bargaining, hmm, bargaining should be conducted in such a way that at the end of the transaction you arrive at a price with which he is happy and you are happy. My motor car needs to be repaired. So I go to your garage and you fix a price for me hmm? and I bargain with you and I said okay we now arrive at a price and then you fix the car and I pay you and I go home and I'm happy with the job that's done. Because this is a transaction in which you are happy and I am happy. When my motor car needs to be repaired in the future, I'm coming back to you. Even if I leave this district and I go to live 50 miles away, 
I still want to come back to you with my Muruka. But if my Muruka needed to be repaired and all that it needed was a fuse to be changed. That's all. And the fuse is 50 cents. And I go to you and you tell me, Sheikh, the transmission is bad. <laughs> and this job is going to take, going to cost you $500 and it's going to take a few days to repair. And of course, because the Sheikh doesn't know the subject, so he gives the car. Three days later, he comes, he pays the 500 and he gets the car. But well, then you went with your friends and while you were drinking the whiskey, say, you know what I did with the Sheikh? <laughs> and then the news reaches the Sheikh. He ripped me off. Would you ever want to go back to him? No. No. The minute you know, the minute you know that this was a transaction in which you were deceived, you were ripped off, you would never want to do business with that man again. Never. You wouldn't even want to shake hands with him again. So the principle involved in bargaining, the principle involved in setting a price is that there should be mutual satisfaction. Islam has not fixed any price, no. But Islam has fixed the norm of mutual satisfaction. Shall we have one more question? Is that a reference to Muslims or Muslims? The market does not recognize a Muslim from a non-Muslim. The market does not give to a Muslim any special privileges to which a non-Muslim is denied. If a Hindu is in the market, the Hindu can make more money and the Muslim may make less money. Hmm? So, long, so far as market price is concerned and so far as business transactions are concerned, the market does not discriminate between a Muslim and a non-Muslim. All that Islam does is to establish and to sustain a free and a fair market. Whether you're Hindu or Muslim or Jewish or Buddhist, you go into the market like anybody else. And if Allah chooses to give you a profit, you get a profit. If Allah chooses to give you a loss, you suffer a loss. Listen, we have a lot of questions. Let's take one, two, three, and we end. Okay. And the Sheikh. And three more and we end, okay? It's quarter past eleven. We have here in Australia, majority of Muslims uh, living uh, in social security you know, and their income very low and they pay rent. Most of them then pay rent. You know. A rent uh, maybe weekly two hundred dollars, you know, two hundred dollars. And they pay they for all life if they don't take any any money from from bank or from from other men, but this men want money only by interest. But they pay rent to men who build. But he is Jewish. He built the, the building and he built the, the the flats and they pay it to him. And this rent never be their money again. But if they from same Jews take take uh, the interest and the uh, the loan. The, the the flat one day will be there the flat uh, I think I think but Allah those people but those people enforced to do this by by kings from Islamic states because they put their money in the America in the Western banks and they if they are doing Islamically or Muslim will be benefit from this will be benefit from that but now I think these people, these people, is, we can put him on the uh, stage of, of the situation of the ruling. Then now in this state, as minority, as minority, but poor people, because they, they come from uh, without anything in this country, and they pay in this, and the rent, and the rent never will take uh, their money. But the flat will be sometimes there. And 
they will survive their children and give this to their children to inherit this, this flat with our interest. And this situation really for Muslims in an Islamic state is very, very tough. Very, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is no better than us. Yeah? All right. The Sheikh has not asked a question. The Sheikh has deferred with me in the opinion which I have expressed. All right? Uh, I never came here to try to convince anyone or to stop anyone from borrowing money and interest to buy a flat. No. Allah has not given to me this job. If anybody wants to borrow money and interest to buy a flat and use whatever reasoning or argument he wants to use, he has the freedom to do so. What I have done is recorded in my book. What I have done is to teach the subject.